And welcome back to uh, Euro Trucking 2. Uh, it was kind of funny in the last episode. Um, towards the end of the episode, I noticed that the game seemed a little sluggish. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. You know, what? why is the game kind of, I don't know, it just wasn't functioning properly. And I noticed that, uh, you know, the graphics were a little sluggish. And so I, I thought, well, maybe there's something running in the background. Well, I'm almost done with the episode. You know, when I'm done, I'll shut it off and see if there's, you know, maybe something started like a backup or or some stupid Windows thing started in the background. And um, so I finished the episode and I, and I closed the game down. In the background, I had been playing farming simulator 2013 and i left the game running so <laughs> i had both games running at the same time and that's why my uh my uh, driving game seemed a little bit sluggish but there it is let's see if we um have any more information on recruitment agencies today and it says i can't hire a driver driver because i don't have a truck but uh, it looks like I'm getting the same same people. Oh my God! Some of these guys really look. Look at this guy. He looks like an axe murderer. Wow. Yeah, I'm getting the same old guys. This guy kind of looks like the guy from the uh, motorcycle show where they build motorcycles, the Tuttle family. He looks a little bit like him. Well. I had a mod that put real pictures up of real people, and I liked it. They were color pictures, and they were nice, And and uh, but it, it broke. I wonder if they've fixed that yet. I'll have to take a look. In the meantime, I guess I'm not ready. So, let's see. Company manager, bank, <clears throat> truck dealers. What kind of truck dealers do I know here? There's Man, Volvo, DAF, Iveco, Majestic, which is uh, the game's generic for um, Mercedes-Benz. I did have a mod for that, too, that changed it to Mercedes-Benz, but uh, it broke, too. I should go looking for mods and see if there's any available. It's, it's, it's debatable how much they add to the game. <clears throat> sometimes it'll add a little bit of uh, aesthetics to the game but then if they keep breaking you know every time there's an update you know it's I don't know let's look at Scania because that's what I like and they're open oh um, I forget I can't do buy online because I'm not high enough level yet yeah I need at least five trucks I can't do that. Let's just find a job and get on the road. How about that? And let's see. Where'd we leave off? We left off in Denmark. So let's see. Where can we go? From Antwerpen to Bremen. No, we weren't in Denmark. We were in the Netherlands. Why do I keep saying Denmark? I must have looked at Denmark or something. Yeah, I'm going to have to change that in my title because I think I put Denmark in the title. It's the Netherlands where we were. Oh, well. We'll fix that. Uh, what else have we got? Let's see. Um, should we go by money or should we go by distance? I don't know. We got forklifts, which we just did. And uh, I wonder if that's the same forklifts, forklifts we just brought in. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Okay, that's a short run. Pressure tank to... Uh, es Esbjerg, Esbjerg, Denmark. Got anything to take us back to um, Germany? Because that's where our shop is. Let's see what we got on the next page. Milano, Milano, Newcastle. I don't want to go back up 
north. Not right this soon. I, uh, I'm still shaking from my last trip to, uh, to um, Great Britain. Uh, driving on the other side of the road, it uh, takes it out of you. Car parts to Orleans, France. We've been there. Where haven't we been? Plymouth, Great Britain, Renners. Wow, that's a ways out. Great Britain again. Logs. Well, now that's not local. So we're out of Antwerp and so... Oh, look, there's cars. Oh, I've wanted to do cars. Should we do that one? Well, you know what we need to do, though, before we take a job? Here's what we need to do. Let's drive... I always forget this. I just finished a job, which means that I've been driving for quite a while. So then I take a new job, and immediately you have to t sleep. Uh, so I think it's probably best if you if you sleep first. And so let's jump in our trusty truck. Do we have the brake on? Yeah, we do. Brake off. Now here's here's one thing I might have trouble with in this episode. Uh, normally, I have a nice, comfortable office chair that I sit in, and um, but it swivels, and it goes up and down, and it does all kinds of stuff, you know, and it makes my lunch for me, and grabs me something cold to drink when I need it, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it swivels, and so when your both your feet are off the floor on onto clutch, brake, and gas pedals, it tends to swivel you around, so my you'll see my head every time I use the clutch. I move because my chair moves, and so normally I'll use a uh, a kitchen chair, just a regular old hard-backed kitchen chair that's pretty stationary. And I didn't do that today. I'm sitting in my office chair, so we'll see how this works. It's definitely more comfortable, but um, but it's not necessarily practical let's see can I can I sleep in this place I hate sleeping during the day too because that means I'm driving at night let's see if it'll let me do that now is this a dealership or is this just a shop yeah it's not gonna let me sleep here but I wonder if I can sleep over there I think it will. I think, think, think. Put the parking brake on, turn the engine off, and let's get a good night's sleep. And it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so loan installments of total 5788 were paid. Well, I'm getting the loan paid off. That's a good thing. Alright, start the truck up. Let's go find us a job. Now, let's see, I did have also, I did have a little bit of damage on the truck. I think it's, I, I, I hate when they call it damage, because just the normal wear and tear of driving will cause damage that you have to get repaired, and uh, that doesn't quite seem right that they call it that, so let's, let's do a little bit of maintenance. Yeah, see, it's just normal wear and tear is what it is, and they call it damage. I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't seem right to me. Okay, so we'll we'll fix that. And uh, while we're while we're in the menu, look at the job market again. See if our jobs are still there. Let's see if that. Uh, oh, it's gone. Or was it on the third page? Oh, well, there's Scania trucks I can haul to the same place. It's not cars, but I could do that. Okay. Scania trucks. Ew. Yes, it's telling 
this to go that way. stopped when I came out because I thought I had enough time for him to go this AI is different I can't get used to it because used to, it used to be you just took took a chance and went for it but now they'll stop for you sometimes all right I think I can go after this guy there's where I thought I was going to be falling Yeah, see, my chair's kind of swiveling around. I'm having a tough time. Use the gas pedal. Yeah, see, the problem is that your feet are off the ground. Normally, when you're sitting, your feet are on the ground, and your chair's not really moving unless you, unless you choose to swivel it. But when you're driving, my feet are up, and they're on. Good Lord. Did you see that? Buck took me out. Anyway, uh, yeah, your feet are up off the floor and on the pedals, and so you know your 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 that leaves your chair free to swivel. I wish there was a option for it to lock it. There may may there may be. I don't know. I really, really never looked that close. But that would be handy because it is comfortable. Well, we'll make do for this episode. See, because it's a pain in the butt, really, to every time I want to play this game. It's already kind of a, a pain in the in the respect that uh, that every time I want to play this game, I have to clear my desk off. Well, it's not that hard. I just take the keyboard and push it forward towards the monitor. And then I have to mount the wheel and the... Uh, I have to mount the wheel and the gear shift onto the... Uh, desk, desktop, and then I have to go in and get a kitchen chair, bring it in, it's hard and uncomfortable, so I'll throw some kind of cushion on it, and set it up, so it's kind of a pain just to play, you know, like a 45 minute episode to record, and uh, to set up, so it would be kind of nice if my chair would stop swiveling, and I wouldn't have to switch chairs at any rate. I pretty much got it set up so that hooking up the wheel and the gear shift isn't that hard of a job because, you know, I put all the cords together and uh, tied them with zip ties so they're not, you know, all over the place. Uh, oh, damn it. That guy didn't slow down. Uh, talking and not watching the GPS again. Gets me in trouble every time. But anyway, I wonder if there's some way I can uh, do something to the chair outside of, uh, like maybe take some duct tape and tape, tape, tape it so it doesn't swivel. <laughs> duct tape, you know. Hey, if you got a roll of duct tape, you can rule the world. Is this an actual Scania factory? That would be cool. Water. How much damage I did. Oh, well, at least I didn't do any damage to the truck. That would, that's, uh, you know, Small consolation. Okay, there's my trailer right there. All right, take the job. The trailer's ready. Proceed. I know this is a long way around, but it's best for me. I usually, uh, I can. There goes the trailer, just like the one I'm picking up. This is usually easier for me because I can stage the uh, the uh, hooking up to the trailer this way.
without having to go back for it, back for it, back for it. So I take a big swing and come at it the way I, the way I used to do when I was actually driving a truck. And, and I got a pretty much straight shot back to the trailer. Okay, here we go with a load of Scania trailer trucks. Let's uh, let's take a look. Just basic Scania tra uh, tractors, kind of like the one I'm driving a little bit. Nothing special. I can't wait to make improvements to my truck. Look, at it. it's a nice truck though. Look, it's, it's even, even says Rude Man 53 on it. Yeah, I can't get better than that. Can ya? Alright, let's go. Oh, like a herd of turtles. I wonder how heavy these trucks are. They don't seem too bad. Although I notice I'm in the first, third, fifth, uh... Switch that to, uh... Two, four, six. Let's see how that works. Look, they slowed down for me. Isn't that nice? The AI works a lot better than used to. Now, here's some trucks coming in. A load of Scania. Gotta love it. I know there is a Scania factory someplace. I didn't look what that was. They, they, they looked like they had other uh, loads there besides Scania. So, um, it's just some kind of a warehouse or something. Previous uh, plays of the game, I don't think I've ever been to where we're going because I don't recall going that far west. Uh, you know, that it's actually kind of northwest of, uh, as far as the map goes. Now, really north, of course, would be Great Britain, but of the of the major map there, it's kind of northwest, and I don't think I've actually ever driven that far that 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 way. So this will be something new. Oh, that was weird. Did you see that glitch? And our first whole booth. Now look, this is one of those toll booths that doesn't have the, the money sign for me. So I have to, I have to, I had to get a mod for this. Because I couldn't get through, so I have to pretend to pay, and then just drive through the darn thing. Now, I hate to do that, it kind of breaks the realism, but uh, I couldn't find any other way to do it. I just, I couldn't get through the booth. I'd hit that barrier, and I'd bounce back 10 feet and do damage to my truck, and, and there was just no way to get through. Now, I don't know what that is. That might be part of Pro Mods, you know, the mod I'm running. Or it could just be a glitch in the game. I just don't know for sure. But I, uh, fortunately, I was able to find a mod that's, you know, that's not, uh, that's not too bad. When I come to a legitimate one where it has the money, that green money sign that floats around in the air, um, I go ahead and play just like I would normally. Even though I could, uh, with the mod, I can just drive right, right through if I want to. But. You know, that's kind of immersion, immersion breaking, and I don't particularly like that. I mean, I'm not completely, you know, uh, playing for realism, but it, it sure makes it a lot more fun if you do. And it makes it a little bit more difficult. I mean, the object is to try to earn money, and if you can skip paying, um, you know, fees like that, that's not advertising. 
as you go to America, it's all neon lights and LEDs now. It's like a, it's like they've got like a, a hundred foot uh, TV screen sitting on the side of the road. Okay, so this load must not be completely light because because I uh, I'm having trouble getting up to the speed limit, which is 56. Well, it looks like a beautiful afternoon in uh, Europe for a drive. Now, one of these days, I'm going to try a little background music. There's there's radio stations that are built into the game, streaming radio stations, and or you can actually put your own music if you have MP3s in the game. You just you just pick out your MP3s and you drop them in a particular folder in your game, and you can play your own uh, playlist. Uh, which is kind of nice. Now, you're going to run into uh, copyright is what I'm afraid of. And, um, you know, I'm just terrified of that copyright. I, I've had a couple of games I've played that, that'll throw a copyright on me. And I'll just take the, the, the video right down. i take it right off and, um, and then deal with it, whatever it is. Yeah, sometimes I've had to re-edit uh, the video and take the music out. Sometimes YouTube will allow you to take it out. There's a button you can push that'll say, do you want to remove just this song? And you say yes, and YouTube will remove it and supposedly leave, you know, the rest of the audio alone, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. And uh, so that's that's one solution. But, uh, you know, they make it so... Uh, you know, they just, they just scare you to death. You know, I've heard so many horror stories about, you know, what can happen. I mean, you're, you know, just trying to do a little bit of entertainment and that kind of thing. And all of a sudden, you get these copyright things on you. And, and they take your, your whole site down. They ban you for life. You know, you hear these stories. So... I guess what I should do is find out what kind of music you can play. I know you can play like classical music and stuff like that because the copyrights are way of it. You know, what are they going to do? Dig up, dig up uh, Beethoven and tell him he's got royalties coming. Yes, there were there was a, a couple of uh, games. There's um, well, I was doing Mass Effect. There was a game where uh, that Liara comes and does a mind meld with Shepard, and they're looking at the uh, memories that were put in her brain from the Prothean technology. And there's as as the scary, bloody images that they're flashing on your brain, you know, while the uh, while they're showing you what uh, what Shepard saw, there's a song, and sure enough, somebody says they own the rights to that song. So I had to take that whole segment out because it's tied right in with the other sound effects and stuff. You know, the song's just kind of running in the background. And then, oh, come on! That's a problem with things nowadays. Everybody wants to sue everybody for everything. And, you know, it's just nobody nobody wins with the lawyers. I'm sure you've heard that before. Anybody that's had anything to do with that kind of litigation knows what, what that uh, feels like. You know, you have two sides to the story when people take somebody else to court. Somebody's supposedly right and somebody's wrong, but that's not always the case. And when it's all said and done, even the person that supposedly wins doesn't win. I've known people that were taken to court for, you know, for something that wasn't right, and they have to pay uh, court fees and lawyer fees to defend themselves 
for something they should have never been sued over in the first place. And, uh, you know, who wins with that? The lawyers. This should show me where I've been. That all that yellow, that's where I've been. Yeah, I can actually change the color of all that too. I didn't I just uh I just haven't. Okay, so yeah, we're we're going into places we haven't been. We have been to Paris because we came up this way through Paris when we went to um Le Havre and Cannes. So we're gonna go through there again through Cannes. Doesn't look like we've been through Rowan. A rune. I don't know how to pronounce half these things. But yeah, we're going into places we haven't been. That's good. Yeah, these uh, tractors that I'm pulling, they must be fairly heavy because I'm... Oh, no, no, don't... Wow, that was a bum. See the trailer, the tractor jump when I hit that. Alright, I should be going 56 and I'm going 30. What's going on? happening ahead. I hate when I get to these globe reliefs because I never know which way to go. Looks like we're going straight through this one. Looks like they hit that barrier 70 miles an hour. Well now there's a cheerful thought. <laughs> Where'd that come from? part of day like in real life that I hate. Uh, dusk. I don't like to drive it at dusk. It, it, it's so hard to see. That's pretty though, isn't it? It's a pretty time of day. I, I kind of like the time of day. I just don't like driving in it. I like seasons. My favorite season is fall. I've always liked fall. The air, the air's brisk. Uh, you know, the you have beautiful skies. You've got the harvest moon. And, you know, you have uh, you have uh, trees that are dropping their leaves and they're colorful. You know, they're messy. Shoot, looks like I'm going this way. But it's a, it's my favorite uh, season. Yeah, here we are in September, so coming into fall. The only thing I don't like about fall is uh, resetting the stupid clocks. I don't know. I don't know if other countries do that or not, but in America, there most states. There are some states that say, you know, heck with you, government. We're not changing the clocks around. Arizona's one of them. They just thumb their nose at the government, saying, no, we're not changing our clocks. Uh, but what happens is, years ago, they did uh, a thing that they called Daylight Savings Time. And I've heard different reasons why. 
uh, one reason was that the, it allowed the farmers to stay in the fields longer. What it does is they, they, they switch the, the time where uh, you uh, spring forward or fall back. That's kind of how you remember. So in the spring, if it's six o'clock at night, you set your you set your uh, your uh, clocks to seven. So it's not six anymore. Now it's seven. So uh, and in the fall, you fall back an hour, and it causes the time to be uh, lighter, longer in the day for summertime. So rather than get dark at eight o'clock, it stay light till nine nine thirty. And so that's why they call it daylight savings time. And then you, in the fall, you go back to standard time. But it's a pain in the butt for one thing. And so in the, in the fall, it's kind of bad because now, if you get up at, at six to, to go to work, and you know, maybe leave the house at seven, if you have a commute to be there at eight, whatever. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's some squirrely road. I was going way too fast. Uh, anyway, if you if you get up at, at, at 6 or 7 to get ready for work, it's dark. So you drive into work in, in darkness. And then it gets dark at about 5 or 6 o'clock in the afternoon, depending, of course, where you live, you know, north or south of the country. But, uh, but where I live, by the time you get home at 6 o'clock, it's dark again. So you basically, you know, get up at, in the dark, you go home in the dark, and it tends to be a long, gloomy winter. So they should leave the daylight savings time so it stays lighter, longer in the fall, too. But they don't. They switch it back. And then here's the other thing. Um, at some point, you lose an hour's sleep because this changes like at midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning. And uh, so at midnight, the, the time changes. So you, uh, at, at one point, you're losing an hour of sleep. So if you're somebody like me, who is a creature of habit, I get up at 6 o'clock every day, including the weekends. I go to bed at you know, 10 o'clock every night. Um, when you lose an hour of sleep, it messes, I'm messed up for a week till I get used to it. There's my little rant about daylight savings time. Unless you live in Arizona, where they tell them to stuff it. Now, think about this, though. If if you are a state that uh, surrounds Arizona, <laughs> and it's 7 o'clock at your time, and it's only 6 their time, that'd be kind of weird. You know, step across the street, and you lose an hour 